Hey there, I'm Christy Gorski, and I am the realtor who just sold your neighbor's home. And this is a really exciting video for me because it means that we are closed now and you have new neighbors. And I get to share a little behind the scenes of how we actually got to the closing table on this one. So we listed at 550 and I'm sure you can see on Zillow, it sold for 575. And that is not the end of the story. It seems like I'm sure you can read between the lines that they got multiple offers, but actually this one is a little different. So I'm really excited to share, you know, this is what I do for the neighbors after every listing. I just give a little behind the scenes of what's going on. So I'm going to present my screen. Just give me a little bit of time to pop it up, but I'm going to present my screen so that you can kind of see how we got to this price and walk you through a little bit of my marketing. My name is Chris. Gorski. I'm a realtor in downtown Lyle. My brokerage is called DPG Real Estate. And I am an expert marketer. I love, love, love marketing. I love launching listings. And it's really what I do best. So this was no exception. Green Trails is a special neighborhood for me. I think the exciting thing about Green Trails is it is in a first time home buyer price point. However, it's actually like the prime price point for a second time home buyer. And that's my niche. The second time home buyer is somebody who, you know, isn't as fearful as the first time home buyer. They've been around the block before. They they know what they like, they know what they need. Nothing really scares them in a home. They're a lot more practical, but I will say they love luxury. Just think about somebody who is in a second time buying stage. They are moving out of their first home probably because they're outgrowing it. They probably got a couple of kids now. They probably have no time in their day to be tinkering with things, fixing things, doing the lawn. They love the idea of having, you know, the higher end washer and dryer, not the like crappy one that came with their first home. You know, they have like a lot more laundry to do now. So like cool gadgets in their house, solar plant panels, like 1940 Green Trails had, you know, just like a little bit of upgrades that make their life easier. That is what the second home time buyer loves and green trails like fits right into that market. So this is kind of like my customer avatar as I was launching all of my marketing. I'm going to to try to share my screen here and show you a little bit of the video so you can you know just familiarize yourself with the with the property itself you know let me flip back and make sure i'm really sharing my screen with you because it looks like maybe i'm not and I do a marketing video with every listing. This is a very, very important part of marketing for me. And so I am excited to share this video with you. You may have seen it on a QR code, but this is a traditional level in green trails. I'm probably very familiar with it. It has three bedrooms upstairs, one on the lower family level, modern kitchen, bathrooms have all been redone. This one also has a I'm sorry, an unfinished house. So, I think it was a great price for a house that's all redone. That one is the biggest house in the green field, but it had a lot, a lot to think about it. So, let's talk about launching this one. I'm going to... Uh, stop sharing my screen so I can just talk to the screen for for just a minute. Okay, so let's talk about launching this listing because it's obviously a really exciting one and it was like a coveted listing. So we always, I always launch on, on a Wednesday or a Thursday and then Saturday we have an open house. So the idea is to create FOMO, right? Like we want to create buzz. We want to launch the listing out into the world. So all of my marketing is deployed. My, my YouTube videos, my email marketing, I do an amazing job on email marketing, all of my digital marketing, my Facebook ads, my YouTube ads, everything is running by that Wednesday. We go live, we go have a 
killer open house, which we did, it was a revolving door. Think of if you are a buyer standing in an open house that you saw a Facebook ad, you saw it come on the MLS, you see in on Redfin, it says hot home, and then you're standing there and there's just like all these people there. You are in an environment where you are excited and you are ready to make an offer. So that's what we try and do when we launch a listing. And that's exactly what happened with this home. So come Saturday, we had a killer open house. Sunday, we had a multiple offer situation. Surprise, surprise. That is exactly where we want to be um, from the perspective of a seller, right? So we had four offers on the table. We were listed at 550. One offer, 540. Good, but not great. Second offer, 550. Perfect. The next offer, 555. And the next offer had an escalation clause. So they bumped their offer up to 5625. You're like, wait, that's not what it sold for. <laughs> so how did we get there? So we move forward with the highest buyer. And this was before Labor Day. And so we had an extension through Labor Day. And we got through the inspection. And we extended a couple days on the other side of it. So crickets, things started happening that made us question the sincerity of the buyers. It was nothing they specifically said or did. It was just like a chain of dragging their feet. So here we are on the other side of Labor Day. We've extended past and we realized this contract isn't going anywhere. And we were supposed to close at that time in 10 days. So we parted ways with those buyers. We chose the wrong buyers, um, obviously, because we chose people who weren't like earnest about moving forward. But sometimes that happens and you don't know you're in that situation until you're already down it. The good news, so we thought, is we had some other buyers on the line. We had three other offers. But the reality is it had been so long down the transaction that those people were gone. They had bought another house. They had started looking elsewhere. So we were kind of at square one. My sellers needed to take a pause. They, in their head, they thought they were moving out in 10 days. Their house was a mess. It was all in boxes. It was certainly not ready to like go back to market the next weekend. So we reset. We took that time. They moved out, cleaned up the house, got reorganized, got all settled in their new house. And we went and put the, their listing in the private network. So we put it in private. That's where when you see listings down the block that have a rider that say coming soon, it's a house that's not quite ready. It's a house that's going to be coming to the market or it's like a placeholder. Exactly what my clients were doing. They were just temporarily off the market while they were getting things reorganized in their life, right? Like literally they thought they were closing in 10 days, it came to a halt. They just couldn't possibly move all the moving boxes in time. They just needed to be in the private network while we reset. So it gave me the opportunity to relaunch all my marketing because honestly, the momentum was so far lost from being on the market and off the market. Now I got to, I had enough time to relaunch all my marketing. It gave me a reset. And here we are about to go live on Wednesday. We have a new launch date Wednesday. Back up to the Friday before then, and I get a call from somebody who saw it the first time, but they were not ready to pull the trigger. It was going to be a multiple offer situation. They just like couldn't be part of it. It wasn't, it, the timing was wrong, but here they are. It's about to go live in a couple of days and they think they have a shot. So Friday, they make an offer, really bad offer, like really stupid bad offer. <laughs> so my clients just say respectfully, no, like we have plans of going live in a couple of days. Like that's where we're at. So I, I, I relay that to the agent. I go, you know what? They just had multiple offers like a couple weeks ago. They got above and beyond what they thought that they were going to get. They just can't accept an offer that's so far low. Knowing that just a couple of weeks ago, they got like a taste of something better. You know, it's just a hard place to be. So when offered a low offer or just go live in like five more days, they chose to just go live. But <laughs> the realtor, she didn't give up. She went back and she got her clients up. So they came back at 540. Again, 
pretty good offer, but it's still like lower than list price. So then I had to have a come to juice conversation. I said, listen, you have to realize where my clients are at. They just got multiple offers two, three weeks ago. They aren't expecting to get more than list price, but without trying the market, like they want to hold off for their price, you know? So they're not like so desperate that they'll accept any offer just because you're offering it to us. The plan is to go live. Like momentum is moving. I got all my marketing out. I have a list of agents now that while we're in private saying, Wednesday's the day, get on the schedule. Wednesday's the day, get on the schedule. I have buyers, you know, waiting to get on the schedule to, to see the house again. So momentum's in our favor. Time is in our favor. We don't really need to be accepting anything below list price. That's it. That's the conversation I have. So Tuesday rolls around. The buyers come back. Here's another offer. <laughs> what is it going to be? $575. $575. Okay. Now we're one day. <laughs> from going live and we have this really good offer in our lap, like better offer than before. Is that an offer that is going to sway my sellers from going live? It was, yes. So the buyer found the number. <laughs> they had to get literally find it, get to that number of, okay, what is going to be enough of a taste that my sellers don't feel like they're leaving anything behind? And they want to go live. We have the momentum to go live. I had seven people lined up to see the house on Wednesday at that time, and it was Tuesday. But I have this offer, and I had to have the hard conversation with my clients. Do we think we're getting better than 575? Where two, three weeks ago, we got 560 to five, and now here we are three weeks later into the season. Are we getting 575 again? Like, are we? And we weighed the pros and cons, and honestly, they took the offer without ever going live, even though the momentum was in their side. I honestly think that that was the best choice for them because why go through the hell of listing again, right? <laughs> if you don't have to, if you truly think that this is, you know, probably the best you're going to get. So that is not a traditional like highest and best story. And I think the beauty of it is in the leverage of that private network period. We did everything right. We launched all of our you know, marketing and we negotiated a highest and best situation the first time really well. But what actually got them the highest price was the leverage of sitting in private for a minute maintaining the control and telling the buyers, hey, if you want it, tell me you want it. Show me. Show me you want it because I'm going live tomorrow. And that doesn't work for everybody, but it worked really well for them. And that's how we got this high price. It wasn't a bidding war. It was trying to get the buyers to bid against themselves, which is exactly what they did. So I just... I, I love being able to tell you the behind the scenes because I don't feel like that's anything that you would get at Zillow. I mean, you're not seeing that anywhere else. Um, but I do have a 12 step marketing plan. And like I said, marketing is deployed for every listing differently. Um, but every, uh, you know, my listing presentation is, de you know, deployed the same way for all of my listings, I'm saying this very confusing because I'm trying to like bring it up as I'm saying it. But basically, I have 12 steps to going live for every single listing. But which of those 12 are the highlight of the story, you know, changes for every listing. So professional photos, professional video, bam. I love, love, love my videos come out amazing. They do really, really well on YouTube. I always do YouTube ads, which not a lot of people are doing. I highlight your neighborhood. You may have seen some, you know, door flyers that I've dropped off for you. Some of you guys got gifts depending on where you live in the neighborhood. Nosy neighbors are awesome. I love nosy neighbors. <laughs> email marketing, I do like nobody else. Videos like these show up in my email marketing. Nobody's doing that. That's something I'm very comfortable doing. I think it makes your listing, uh, you know, shine and separate from others. But an open house was really essential in selling this house the first time. I do an open house for all listings on the first 
weekend that were live, but this one, man, this one nailed it. It was a busy open house. We got offers from the open house. I mean, everything we wanted to do, we did. And that that's just so exciting as a marketer. <laughs> so I was incredibly ecstatic for the outcome for my, for my clients, you know, and they were able to get an incredible price. And what does that mean for you? You're the neighbor. I mean, you get to capitalize on that too, because that just impacted your home value as well. So I hope this was informative. Again, my name is Christy Gorski. I'm a Lyle realtor. I love selling in green trails. You guys are the perfect, perfect market for my target audience. I, you know, I, I speak to the buyer of green trails very well. And that's why I think this home sold so quickly as well is because my marketing was just able to be very fluent to the to the type of buyer that was attracted to this house. So if you ever have questions about how I would market your home, you know where to find me. I, you know, I'm postcarding and I'm flyering and I'm sending you out videos and all. So uh, definitely reach out. My name is Christy Gorski with DPG Real Estate and I hope this was useful for you.